Well, hey, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Amazing Seller Podcast. This is episode number 751, and session number 236 of Ask Scott. This is where I answer your questions here on the podcast, and I'm going to do it again here today. And today is going to be all about email list building, but more importantly and more precisely, we're going to be talking about can I build an email list with no website? And I'm going to give you the pros, I'm going to give you the cons, I'm going to give you everything in between, and there's a couple of other little questions that came in around this topic, but that's what we're going to be diving into today, and I can't wait because, uh, well, it's really, really important that you start considering building an email list if you haven't done so already, or if you're sitting on an email list and you haven't communicated with it, well, you're going to want to do that, and I'm going to share with you exactly what that looks like. Now, I am freshly back from San Diego. All right, I just got back. I just uh, I took a red eye flight, then I had company. So I, today is the first day that I'm back. Actually, that uh, well, I'm not recording this the day of my red eye, by the way. Um, but I am recording it uh, just after I got back, and when I got back into the work mode here, and uh, and getting back to creating podcast episodes. So I am freshly back. I am on fire right now. Like I am pumped. I am so happy that the audio book is finally done. Now it's done as far as it's been recorded. It hasn't been edited yet. That's in post-production right now, but I am just, I'm really excited on how it came out. The experience was awesome. I was a little nervous going in there and we actually did it in less time than I anticipated. I thought it was going to take three days. It only took two. Um, and also if you missed the episode 750, that there was with a good buddy of mine, actually someone I grew up with, played Little League with. Um, he's been through a whole lot with me. I actually used to work with him years ago at my father's construction company, but him and I recorded an episode in San Diego. That was episode 750, and the title of that is Untold Stories, Childhood Struggles That Turned Into the Take Action Effect Success, and the reason why I wanted to record that, well, is because he was there, Jimmy Krill is his name, and he was there the entire time as I was a kid, growing up, going through the construction phase, and everything up to this point, he's been there, but also, he was there during the recording, I had him fly in, he actually did some video work for me, and then he also was there to support me, and uh, and while he was there, uh, he actually listened to the entire book read, and uh, he gives his thoughts on that, because a lot of those stories he remembers very, very clearly as a child, and uh, and some of the some of the crazy things that we did, and we uh, we, we kind of dive into those things. Some of the things that I didn't even know, know we were going to bring up, that was in episode 750, so if you missed that episode, here's a little nudge. Go on over and listen to that after you get done with this one. Episode 750. All right. Now, the other episode that I want to make sure that you don't skip is episode 749, the one just before that. That was just before I was getting ready to go to San Diego, and I decided to do another little test run of a read of the book. So this way here, I can kind of get into the rhythm, and I pulled out the back part of the book where I put together a 90-day roadmap to success, and I went through, read it all, gave you my thoughts, and I also gave you a detailed plan and exercise, and I have to say, the feedback has just been amazing since that came out, so if you didn't listen to that episode, you might want to go do that as soon as you get done listening to 750 or this episode, all right? Now, my thoughts of the week, you guys know I always love to give my thoughts, and I've got a lot, I've got a lot of thoughts, and I'm just, I'm really excited about a lot of different things going on right now, and uh, the big thing that I really just want to let you guys know, which is so, so important, is really two things, all right, and this actually came from, from one of our listeners that after they listened to episode 749, they said, Scott, those were some golden nuggets right there. And the big one for me was consistency. So I want to just let you guys know, and I'll share a little story here with you in a minute, but how when you commit to something, that's one thing. And then when you are consistent with something, that really makes that thing move, right? Commitment is one thing. That's like saying, yes, I'm going to do it, but the consistency of showing up every single day or every single time that you commit to that day and you show up to do it, that's where the magic happens, all right? And that's where it turns into success. And success, can, you know, that doesn't just mean financial success. That means the result of whatever you're doing and starting to see those results. So I'm going to give you a little example here. 
We are getting ready inside of Brand Creators Academy. Uh, we are getting ready right now to do our reveal of the of the the niche that we've been working on for the past what month and a half, two months. Uh, and we're going to start to actually show people inside all of our all of our Brand Creator Academy peeps. We're, we're going to be starting to dive into the background of this niche that we picked, why we picked it, but then also like what we've been doing in the background just to get a little bit of a head start so we can show people what we've done. Now, that site isn't really getting a ton of traffic right now. Like maybe 10 a day, maybe 10 visitors a day. And it's been, you know, about a month and a half to two months right now. But here's what I want you to listen to next, all right? There's another site that we started, which we're not publicly going to share in our academy yet. It is going to come a little bit down the line. The reason why is because I don't want to skew the numbers. I want it to be kind of like a little surprise, all right? But that site, we've been actively working on for a little bit longer, probably around four months now, maybe five. Maybe we're approaching five. And that one right there is starting to pick up steam. It's starting to pick up steam. And what I mean by that is I looked at the last 30 days of traffic and we have gotten over 4,500 page views, 4,500 page views. How would it look for you if you were able to have 4,500 page views or let's, let's go, let's make it, I guess, a little bit more interesting. It's actually, uh, I believe it was uh, 1,400 unique people that came there. How would you like to have 1,400 people that see your stuff every single month, people that are targeted that could potentially buy something? We're not even talking about the email list stuff yet, all right? So how would that be? And that's just growing. And now, how about this? As you start to build that, our goal is to get that to 25,000 impressions or page views. So this way here, we can turn on Mediavine. Mediavine is an ad network that will start to pay us per impression. That's what we're going towards. So we're getting there. But you see what I'm saying? Consistency. We committed to that. We we didn't stop because after a week or two weeks, we didn't have traffic. We just started showing up. We had a plan. Obviously, we have a plan. And that's what we do inside of Brand Creators Academy is we create the success plan and the roadmap, and then we just stick to it. It's like I've said, we we were trying to really be consistent on things that will move the needle. And to me, if you understand your market, if you understand what they're looking for, if you understand what they want as far as the end result, then you can serve them and then you can get in front of them. And that's where we get that attention. All right. So again, that's like two little stories there, right? I got one site that's about a year, um, a year, a month and a half, about a month and a half old. And I got another one that's about five months old. And then I got another one that's about two years old, and my uh, my my partner just sent me over a little screenshot here this morning, and um, you know we're we're approaching two hundred thousand okay impressions, and which equates to by the way about three thousand dollars in recurring income without delivering one product. All it is is from ad traffic or from traffic that's converting into ads, and they don't even have to click on the ads. All right, and like I said, I just got a screenshot. I'm going to pull it up here on the fly. Uh, and so here it is. Yesterday, we had 7,294 page views, which converted into $145.68 from not selling one product, not from selling an affiliate product, just from people showing up to the site. And right now, the time that I'm recording this, we're at the 11th, uh, and that's 11 days old. $959.74 is what we've accumulated so far in less than 11 full days. Okay, so let that sink in for you. That's what we're doing here. We're finding ways to diversify our income, our revenue streams by getting traffic of people that are targeted in our market, right? They're showing up because they are interested in what we are putting out there. And that's the whole name of the game here. We're planting seeds, all right? And then over time, they start to grow. And some grow bigger than others, okay? And this is exactly what we're doing inside of Brand Creators Academy. Now, currently, we are not open. If you're interested in, number one, downloading and watching the free training, it's still available. You guys can go grab it right now if you head over to brandcreators.com. Or if you want to do that and jump on the wait list, because when we open, we're going to open the Academy for a short period of time. And that's what we're doing. We're only going to be opening the Brand Creators Academy probably four or five times a year, depending. All right. So if you're at all interested, 
make sure that you jump on that waitlist and grab the resources that we have there for you. We have the brand growth validation checklist there. And then there's two different, uh, actually trainings that I go through and I have you look over my shoulder as I'm doing this, this validation and really starting to see the landscape of two different markets. And you can really see how this stuff all starts to fit together. So definitely go check that out. All right. So that's it. Commitment and consistency equals success. All right. All right. So, oh man, I am so excited because we are going to be diving into this. Can I build an email list with no website? And I'm going to read you a question, but I'm also going to read you a second question with a little bit of a little twist onto it. And then actually Monday, I'm going to be posting uh, a video, actually the recording from a video on the podcast because it's been getting so much attention. It's been getting so much feedback, and I want to share that with you because it goes right in line with what we're talking about here. All right, so one last thing. I promise this will be the last thing, and then we'll get into it. Guys, iTunes people, if you're listening right now, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I am loving the the positive reviews that you guys are submitting, but I'm just loving the feedback, and I'm loving the energy and the love, and what I want to do here is I want to give a little shout out to one of our iTunes peeps, and I'm going to pull that up and just give a little shout out here, and this one came in from Lemon Jello Swift, all right, and the, the subject line or the title was Best Ecom Podcast Around. Wow, I have been listening to the Amazing Seller Podcast for about a year and a half and have enjoyed all the information Scott has provided. It has been so beneficial to me that I went back and listened to all the archive podcast. His podcast has now become a part of my daily routine on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Keep up the good work and take action. Thank you so much, Lemon Jello Swift. I appreciate that. And guys, if you have not left a review yet, if you could do that for me and subscribe to the podcast, that will allow us to get more eyeballs on the podcast and help more people that are like us, that want to go out there and build a future-proof business and really want to create that ultimate lifestyle, that ultimate freedom that we all want so much. So if you could do that, that would be amazing. All right, so let's jump in. This is not going to be an audio question. This came from YouTube, uh, so I'm going to read this, and uh, here it is, okay? And this came in from Ali, okay? So I don't have a website. I just deliver content within the body of my email with some detailed benefits, and then soft sell a link to a product directly. No website. Is this method feasible on a sizable list of 10,000? It's a great question, and that is a a great problem to have because, well, you have 10,000 people, and I'm assuming that they are interested in what you have to offer or at least the topic. So here is the deal, all right? And there's a couple of pros and cons here, but I'm going to kind of go through my, my thoughts on this, all right? So you don't necessarily have to have a website to have any type of content that you can deliver. You can deliver that content directly in an email. That could be your thing, right? That could be your thing. All you're going to do is you're going to show up in someone's inbox and you're going to educate through that email. People will then start to understand that you're delivering content through an email, so it's going to make them want to open the email. Now, the one little one little flag that came up here for me, a couple flags. One is if all you're doing is delivering a little bit of content and always pitching a product that could turn people off. Okay. And it could, you know, it could show people that, okay, they're going to, you know, they're going to show up my inbox and they're always going to be selling me something. Now I don't have a problem with sprinkling something in, but the other problem here is if that product isn't yours. Okay. If it's an affiliate product, you cannot do that in an email. Okay. Let me say that again. You cannot take a direct affiliate link in an email and send people to an affiliate offer. It's against uh, email marketing uh, protocol. It's, it's against terms of service of a lot of different providers. So I do not recommend doing that. But what I do recommend doing if you don't have a blog, okay, is number one, you should probably create a blog, <laughs> all right? I'm just going to say, uh, because why not have 10,000 people that you could then send them over to a blog? It doesn't have to be fancy, guys. It just has to be a, a page that they can access, okay? And if you don't want to do that, have a Facebook page. All right, have a Facebook page and then have all your content there and have your links there, okay? I would rather see you do that. Now, because you don't have uh, you know, your own website and you want to maybe 
and, and I don't know, you don't have it in here if it's affiliate products or your own products. If it's your own products, there's no problem with that. You can drive people over to uh, your, your store. You can send people over to your Amazon store, your Amazon product listing. You can do that, okay? It's just the affiliate thing you gotta be careful with, all right? So yes, you can, okay, send people emails and then send them to your product if it's your product or the other way would be to send them to an external page and then that way there you can kind of talk about the product and then from there you can you know have people click on links inside of that that's what i love about having your own blog by the way because if you're creating this this post about you know your certain topic right well then from there you can you can kind of weave in other products that might be similar to it and then you're also going to be driving that those people there with traffic the other cool thing is, is maybe you have a blog post that doesn't have anything to sell or to offer, just pure content. That's a great way to build uh, goodwill with those people. Um, but I love the idea of like, listen, if you're stuck on, like, oh my gosh, I got to build a website and you have products and stuff, don't worry about it. Just show up in their inbox with value. Just give them value every single time you show up. That's what I would recommend. So those are the pros and cons to that. Now, there's a, there's another question that came in. And again, this question came in on the video that I, uh, that I created, which I'm going to actually take the audio from that. And I'm going to, uh, I'm going to play that on Monday. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, uh, before we actually listen in on that. Um, but that actually, uh, is going to be really in line with what we're talking about. And the title of that was how to write emails to sell a product. All right, email marketing strategies in three easy steps. And I go through exactly what this next question uh, is talking about. And that question is, uh, and I'm this one here, I'm not sure who this was from. I'm trying to see. I don't see a name. Uh, let me just read it. Uh, it says, uh, hey, Scott, uh, thanks for the, for the video. Um, please tell me this. I write more emails um, these days to about 8,000 subscribers, but the open rate is about 1,723 subscribers. So what he's saying here, or she is saying, that they're getting 1,723 people to open the email, and the click rate is only 500. Where is the problem, Scott? All right, that's the question. Well, here's the deal. I did a little bit of math, okay? If we have 8,000 subscribers, and we're getting 1,723 to open, well, that's a 22% open rate. Holy moly, that's way above standard. If you're getting 10 to 15%, you're doing pretty well. Now, little tip for you, and if you're listening to this and you're this, this type of person as well, where you're sending emails, one email, and you're looking at these numbers and you're going, oh, and you're scratching your head and you're like, I'm not sure if these are good numbers. Well, let me just tell you, this is pretty darn good for starters. Okay, 22% open rate is great, but here's what you can do. And I've saw, I've talked about this before. You can then send to the unopens. So what we do generally is we will send an email and then we will wait 24 hours and then we, we will resend that email to the people that have not opened the email yet. All right. We might change the subject line just a little bit, just to tweak it just a little bit. Right. And we'll generally add anywhere from eight to 10%. So I would almost be willing to bet that if you were to send this to the unopens, you'd probably get up as high as 30% of an open rate, which is incredible. All right. Now here's the other good news, but you're, you're thinking it's bad news. You're getting 6% click through rate. That means, and here's kind of like the overall thing that we need to understand. All right. We're, we're getting people to raise their hand. Okay. By entering their name and email address. Okay. Then from there, we're getting them to open our emails by either curiosity or something that they're interested in, right? Something that we know that they'd be interested in. So that's like step one, right? Is we need to get them to open the email. Once we get them to open the email, then we want them to click a link. So then we want them to click, right? And so here that's a 6% click through rate, a 6% click-through rate. That is crazy high. That is awesome. Like who wouldn't want 500 people to go over to their product or 500 people to go over to their blog post, to their Facebook page, wherever, right? And 1,723 people, put them in a room, a lot of people, but we can actually increase this. This is the good, good news. We can increase this by just going through and using the unopened feature in your email provider. Now, depending on who you're using, we use ConvertKit 
and they make it super easy. Again, if you have not yet checked out ConvertKit, then I would recommend you checking them out through my link because yes, I am an affiliate and yes, you will buy me a cup of coffee, but they're a great service and you can find them by heading over to theamazingseller.com forward slash convert kit. All right. So all one word convert kit. All right. And, uh, and check them out. Give them a try. All right. There's, I'm, I'm telling you right now, well, you know what? Even if you didn't use them, use whoever you want, but just make sure that they offer the unopened feature. You want that feature. I'm telling you right now, you'll increase it with like not even five minutes worth of work. It's, it's incredible. All right. So you're, you're with a 22% open rate and a 6% click through rate. That is very, very good. And we can actually increase that uh, by probably having better subject lines. And you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can do. All right. But right now doing pretty good out of the gate. All right. So hopefully that helped you. Anyone else that's listening, that's in this situation. And let me just also say, if you right now are sitting on some email addresses that you have, that people have raised their hand or past customers or any of that stuff, and you're not emailing them at least once per week, shame on you. Shame on you. You need to start emailing those people with value. And I'm telling you, once you do that, you're going to get people that are going to be looking forward to your emails. And then from there, your sales will most likely increase. All right. And your traffic definitely will increase. Right now, if you had a blog and you sent that email and you were sending them to your blog, you'd have 1,723 people potentially to go over to that blog post. Right now, there's 500 people that did or would have, right? Because that's how many people clicked. All right, so just keep that stuff in mind. This is exactly what we're doing in whatever business we're working in is always around email marketing, and this is also what we're going to be doing inside of Brand Creators Academy. It's it's just going to be amazing. So, all right, anyway, that's my uh, my my feedback for these these two questions and my advice. And guys, if you have a question that you want me to answer on an upcoming Ask Scott session, all you have to do is head over to theamazingseller.com forward slash ask, and you can do it right there. Or if you show up on YouTube on one of my videos and you want to comment down below, I'm always reading the comments. You can do it there as well. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. All right. So that is going to wrap up this episode. Remember though, Monday, I'm going to be posting a podcast that is going to be talking all about how to write emails to sell a product. And I'm going to be giving you three easy steps that you can do this in. And I'm telling you right now, it will increase your list. It'll also increase your opens and then ultimately your clicks. And then really you're going to be able to get in front of more people. All right. So that's what it's going to be all about. So look forward to that episode on Monday. All right, guys. So that is it. That's going to wrap it up. As always, remember, I'm here for you. I believe in you and I am rooting for you, but you have to, you have to come on, say it with me, say it loud, say it proud, take action, have an awesome, amazing day. And I'll see you right back here on the next episode.